Hi, I'm Wayne Maglio from Maglio's Prime Painting located in Southern British Columbia, Canada. Thanks for watching this 8-step video on spraying multiple colors on a staircase using an airless sprayer. After my samples were provided to the homeowners, they chose to go with a high gloss finish on the handrail and a semi-gloss finish on the spindles and the base section. The color for the handrail is going to be Universal Black, which is a Benjamin Moore color. It's a very dark charcoal, I'd say one shade lighter from actual black and the spindles and base will all be done in cloud white. The material I'm using is a waterborne hybrid, uh, often referred to as a modified alkyd. Uh, it's called Advance, and it's been on the market for a couple of years. Most painters are having great success with it for getting a smooth finish with a sprayer. And the railing before, as pictured here, was natural oak, and the balusters were white, and the base section was also natural oak. The carpet is going to be replaced after the spray job and the walls uh, that are peanut color, the lower walls, will be repainted. The upper walls will, will be the same so they'll be masked and protected as well as the brand new hardwood floor that was installed on the upper level. Uh, that I'll cover with ram board. Now the first step in accepting any spray job and planning it uh, is the assessment and I have about, uh, depending on the job, 15 to 20 different factors that I consider too many to detail here in this video, uh, but I will print a list of them so you can see the things that, uh, that I consider, such as the environment, the humidity, and the tolerance of the actual people themselves for the disruption. Uh, so I'll have a list here for you on video. Uh, then the uh, other factor that I consider is whether I can do this job myself or whether I need help. Now this is kind of a borderline job. Um, the problem here is there's going to have to be five or six trips to the, the site and I have a little bit of extra work on, on site, but not enough for two people. The other thing is two people working in a stairwell together uh, can kind of get cumbersome. Uh, so I elected to go uh, uh, with the most cost effective way of doing this and uh, go ahead on it solo. So I'm going to perform this spray job by myself, although uh, having a helper uh, to run the lines and prevent uh, dragging the lines over fresh paint or move lighting uh, that's something that you might want to consider uh, after you do a few of these jobs. Hi, okay, we're ready to continue on with the preparation. And the first thing I do is move it, all of the smaller objects, anything I can get out of the area, take those away. And then I seal off all of the rooms that are adjacent to the spray area with painter's plastic. In this case, there was a sunken living room on one side, on the other side there was a dining room, and then uh, entrance to a kitchen, the uh, hallway. All that had to be sealed off on the lower floor. And then upstairs there were some areas that I had to seal off with painter's plastic as well. Now, continuing on with the handrail itself, I wash that with a PSP solution and then rinse it just to get off any hand oil or other contaminants. Uh, then I sand the entire project. And for sandpaper, it's really important to me uh, to use uh, Norton. This is a, a Canadian-made sandpaper called No Fill Zerite. Uh, the product number on this is A475. Uh, the first grip I use is 180, and I like this sandpaper because the backing is a cloth and paper combination so that it's easy to fold this and shape it and manipulate it, and it, it, it's better actually after it gets used a, a, a bit because it forms the, uh, the shape of your hand and the shape of the surface you're sanding. Uh, I don't really like 3M sandpaper. It has a very stiff backing on it. I find it's hard to, to shape. It always wants to maintain its square form. Uh, so again, this is uh, No Fill Durite A475 Norton Sandpaper. You can go to their website and uh, see if you can find a local source for this. Now, I use LePage's plastic wood uh, to do any filling. Uh, sometimes I use Famil wood, uh, it just depends. Uh, in this case, I didn't have a lot of filling to do, so I used plastic wood. Uh, a little harder to sand, but you get a harder finish on that as well and I vacuum everything at the end with a, a good vacuum cleaner with a soft brush on it, bristle brush, and I catch all of the uh, sanding dust on the rail itself, on the spindles, and at the base section. Now the carpet uh, wasn't going to be replaced for a few weeks after the job was finished, 
so the owner asked me to leave it in place, otherwise the nailing strips would be exposed to uh, traffic on the stairwell, including some children. So I had to leave the carpet down. What I did as a solution to expose the, the vertical side of the base section so I could get paint on that, was I cut a one inch strip all the way down the stairs. I just used a heavy duty uh, box cutter and uh, peeled away a one inch strip from the base section. I used a 3M masking gun to mask paper all the way down that carpeted area so at the end of the day when I left I could rip that up and leave a dry staircase for the owners to use. Okay, continuing on with step three, spraying the primer. Um, I chose this Insulex. Uh, it's a waterborne primer. Uh, it's called Styx. Uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, it's got great adhesion, dries fast, and uh, what I like about it is it dries uh, smooth and fairly hard. It's not chalky. Uh, so you don't really have to do a lot of sanding with this, but uh, the whole project did get uh, touched up uh, with sandpaper or 220 for the handrail and the sanding sponge. Uh, so this is a great primer for this kind of work. I also use a Graco Airless uh, Model 395, a 50 foot hose with a 3 foot whip on the end. Uh, ordinary Contractor 2 is my gun. And uh, I didn't use an extension because of all the angles here, you know, and spraying all different directions. Uh, we just get in the way. So I just used the gun uh, with a F210 fine finish tip. Best tip for this kind of stuff. Uh, and it works for all, uh, all the products that I'm using today, uh, Advance and, uh, and the bonding primer. Uh, after that, uh, uh, any nicks show up. Uh, usually when you prime, you know, you see a few things that you miss, so I use a little plastic wood on that. But be sure to spot prime. Uh, those little nicks, if you don't spot prime over top of your filler, uh, they might interfere with your finished coat, and then you've got a real serious problem. Okay, here we are, step four, masking. Um, this is the critical part, you know, just ask an auto body guy. Um, you know, if you're good at masking, uh, you're worth your weight in gold. Uh, the winning masking tape for this job is definitely, without a doubt, frog tape. <laughs> Frog tape, masking tape is critical and, and you're taping over brand new paint, right? so it can't be too sticky or it will pull the new paint off. And spraying black against white or red against white is critical and, and, and dark colors will tend to bleed under the tape and ruin your job or cause you never ending touch ups. Uh, so you want sealed tight corners and that's where the frog tape comes in. Now, the only thing about frog tape uh, uh, is it uh, isn't perfect with some of these new Alkyd modified paints like I'm using. It works with Advance, but Advance doesn't have a whole lot of water in it, right? So, uh, another guy told me, he said, well, before you start spraying your, your finish coat on, it's a good idea to wipe a damp rag over this tape uh, because it helps to activate it. I haven't tried that yet, you know, but I did have good results, which you'll see in the pictures. Um, because I was using frog tape... <laughs> <laughs> Frog tape over uh, new paint. I tried the yellow. Uh, the yellow has less adhesion than the green tape, you know, so this is really good over uh, sensitive surfaces. Uh, the other thing is you need to exper experiment when you're taking the tape off because removing it properly is even more critical. Uh, I recommend taking it off when the newly sprayed material isn't quite dry. Uh, sometimes, like I say, conditions and materials are different, so you need to experiment with that. But the uh, important thing is don't wait too long. Take your tape off. And that's it on tape. Okay, uh, here, so here we are with step five, uh, spraying the advance. Um, again, I spray the dominant color first, so I sprayed two coats of uh, cloud white. Uh, that's the can there for the black, anyway. And um, four to six hours dry to touch. If a second coat is required, allow 16 hours to dry before sanding and applying the second coat. Um, I think that's important. I think you really should let this uh, rest overnight before you second coat it, although a lot of painters would argue that with me. Uh, some guys uh, even suggest uh, recoating this halfway through the dry to touch time, which would be after three hours. I, I don't recommend that. Um, the beauty of this paint is it's very like oil paint. And uh, if you're used to using oil paint on your railings, uh, this, this is very, very close. Uh, so I give it the benefit of the doubt, and I do let this dry overnight uh, before I recoat it.
before the second coat, I sand it again uh, a little bit with uh, 220 and, uh, and go to town. So that's what happened on spraying the cloud white. Uh, over two days, um, I sprayed the two coats. And then uh, the next step is after that is to mask, while masking, uh, mask the cloud white. And uh, first, uh, I mask the tops of the balusters uh, with one inch frog tape. And I use a very thin uh, putty knife, thin bladed putty knife, uh, to, to uh, pressure that down at the top edge where the white uh, on the baluster is going to meet the black on the bottom of the handrail. So every one uh, is in this project, about 67 of them, uh, got masked with this first. And then I, I wrapped it with uh, uh, masking paper from a 3M uh, masking gun. So, so you have your one inch masking tape, but then you have your masking paper, and then on the paper I break plastic off that all the way down. So that way when I come to spray my handrail, nothing goes on in the finished work. That was uh, step five. Now, um, and step six. So next step uh, is spraying the handrail itself. Uh, again, I use two coats, uh, this high gloss ultimate black, and uh, I let it cure for a day between coats sand lightly before the final coat. Uh, remove all masking four hours after spraying the final coat. So that's the answer to the how long should you leave your masking tape on. In this particular job, in this particular humidity and temperature, etc., four hours was the magic time uh, that I had to remove all of my masking. And so once I've got my second coat on my handrail, I strip all of my masking off, but I'm not done yet. I do something that a lot of painters um, ignore. I clear coat it, and uh, a lot of people think this stuff is is the end all and be all. Uh, the problem is, is a month from now you can still scratch this finish, and and really, in all fairness, blacks uh, do tend to show scratches from keys or rings. Uh, and in this case, the owner is actually has to rely on the handrail to get up and down the stairs. So it was a no brainer um, to have step eight. Um, I, I just have this little can, um, but I use States Clear, and this is amazing over advance. I highly recommend this in any area of high use. Uh, you'll get ten times the hardness and protection uh, if you put this over top of advance. And uh, as I said, all of my masking has been stripped, so I'm not going to spray this. You just use a soft nylon brush and, uh, and plan your moves. Like in that case with the stairwell, I had to have an eight-foot solid ladder there uh, because I'm not going to reach over from the stair side and try to brush this or I'm going to have problems. Um, so, so again, uh, you need to, to, to have a strategy. It took 20 minutes for me to apply a coat of this. I just put it on the top of the handrail and the sides of the handrails. Uh, so uh, what the end result is is much, much harder and it actually boosts the high gloss finish on the advance by about 10 times. So you get a sparkly piano black diamond finish with this stuff. Highly recommend using space player. It's not a big deal to put it on and boy does it make, it make your job a lot better. Uh, so that's it for step 8. Thanks very much for, for watching and I'll be right back with the closing comment. A month later the client called me, they, they really, really fell in love with the job and they wanted me to increase the uh, pop a little bit by doing three shelves at the base of three different columns in the sunken living room area uh, with ultimate or the uh, universal black as well as uh, clear coating that the stays clear. So I did those three and uh, it really added a lot of pop. They also asked me to paint the base section that was finished in the uh, cloud white uh, they wanted me to do that in the uh, ultimate black or universal black as well. Again, I'm Wayne Maglio from Maglio's Prime Painting in Southern British Columbia. Thank you very much for watching my eight-step video on spraying multicolors on a stairwell with an airless sprayer. All of the products except for the no-fill sandpaper I bought at Benjamin Moore on Oxford in Port Coquitlam. They give you great service there and I always enjoy uh, picking up materials from them when I'm painting in the bank. Again, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your painting job.
steps to spraying a multicolor surface on a on a hair <laughs>